Thank you. All right, so next up we have a presentation. This is from a workshop titled Future Directions in Genomics and Health Equity. Um, this was a workshop sponsored by NHTRI in early April. Uh, Judy Cho is with us today. She was one of the co-chairs and organizers of that workshop. And she's going to uh, present the report to you. Uh, I think many of you know Judy. She's a professor and dean of translational genetics at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. She has a longstanding interest in identifying the genetic underpinnings of irritable, irritable bowel syndrome and Crohn's disease. She was a leader in some of the earliest uh, genome-wide association studies done in those phenotypes. And uh, Dr. Sandra Lee at Columbia University was one of the co-chairs of this as well. Judy's going to give the presentation, but Sandra is also joining us and will be available during the question and answer session. So uh, Dr. Cho, thank you for being with us. I see your slides are up, so why don't you go ahead and begin? Thank you, Rudy. Um, why don't we go to the next slide? So it was a general pleasure working with NHGRI staff in, in planning and participating in this workshop. And um, the goals of the workshop were to um, identify the research gaps and opportunities that will help address health disparities uh, and improve and really move towards and achieve health equity in genomics. Uh, gratifyingly, there were over 300 participants um, and it was really quite a bit of fun working with Sandra Sujin Lee, Lucia Hindorf, and uh, Ebony Madden um, in planning this and making this workshop a reality. Next slide. So in terms of the keynote speakers, we had three of them. Uh, the first was my mentor uh, from the University of Chicago days, Nancy Cox, who's currently at Vanderbilt University. And so Nancy highlighted in her talk a number of uh, general principles going across traditional disciplines, uh, really uh, collaborating with folks that she traditionally had not done previously. Um, she emphasized the importance of doing no harm and providing reference lab values. Um, that if we entirely rely on one population for reference lab values, they, that may not be appropriate for all populations and may result in over testing. Um, and, and again, this we're violating the principle of not doing any harm. Um, the second keynote speaker was John Carpton uh, from USC, who's a cancer researcher, who highlighted that many of the important cancer data sets are substantially underpowered in diverse populations. And he argued very uh, articulately the need for not just sampling appropriately, but also oversampling, given some features of African, recent African populations in terms of diversity, uh, in terms of short liquid disequilibrium blocks, there is a genuine scientific value to oversampling these populations. And the third series of keynote speakers that we had uh, was President Hildreth from uh, Mahara University and Genevieve Wojcik. Um, so President Hildreth talked about uh, the, the fact, the, the very obvious fact that the, the COVID pandemic has had a disproportionate impact um, on um, uh, underrepresented populations. Um, he talked about exciting new initiatives within um, historically black medical colleges, including a Together for Change initiative in terms of recruiting uh, patients. Um, Genevieve Wojcik uh, pointed out various features of po polygenic risk scores, and she highlighted that what questions get asked, uh, what the study reflects the interests of the investigators. And then both, both of these final keynote investigators talked about the primary value of uh, community engagement, trust, and longstanding partnerships. Next slide. So um, in addition to the keynote uh, talks, um, well, scheduled was a panel discussions following each of the major keynotes. Um, we had lively panel discussions with great moderators. Uh, the first panel discussion, which was headed by Dr. moderated by Dr. Perez Stable, um, talked about health disparities and moving and how we actually move from, uh, to health equity and genomics. Um, there was discussions about the key role of poverty and racism. Um, I love the phrase, um, we, uh, we need to become comfortable with having uncomfortable conversations. Um, there was uh, definitions uh, in this panel of health equities that go beyond just race, which is obviously substantial, but to include disabilities and involvement of indigenous communities. Next slide. 
Um, the panel on identifying research gaps and opportunities was moderated by Dr. Hughes Halbert uh, from USC um, and talked about various mechanisms whereby accountability uh, can be achieved, uh, the importance of resource distributions in this. Um, and it was actually kind of an interesting panel uh, recognizing that there was a substantial amount to do, uh, but as a community, we are doing okay, but can certainly do better. Next slide. Um, and then the final panel was addressing structural factors needed to support health equity research in genomics. And this was moderated by my colleague at Mount Sinai, Carol Horowitz, uh, with the panelists as listed. And again, the, the structural factors are, again, highlighted the importance of trust representation uh, following President Hildreth's talk. Um, and Neil Risch made the particular point that we, of the importance of engaging with communities um, highlighting the importance of research, but we can't overpromise regarding the positive impact uh, for research, for genetics research to these communities. Next slide. Uh, we had five breakout groups that was open to all registrants and the SDOH or social determinants of health um, highlighted and had a very good and lively discussion about what are the specific measures that are not routinely measured in much of biomedical and genomics research. The structural factors breakout group dis discussed and highlighted very specific mechanisms for community engagement and how that community engagement and interactions is bi-directional in nature. The third breakout group on bench to bedside uh, emphasized some of the points that have just been made a, a few minutes ago, that diversity needs to be included in all types and all stages of genetics and genomics research. Um, there were some interesting points talking, uh, talking about how an excessive focus on out, outcome metrics may in fact uh, result in a, a worsening of diversity. So we have to actually think a, a couple of steps down. The data science and, um, breakout group uh, talked about many of the similarly overlapping themes and highlighted the importance of starting early um, in the workforce and training uh, involved in genetics and genomics research. And finally, the LC breakout group uh, talked about the downstream exacerbations, the importance of not exacerbating uh, some of the disparities, uh, the importance, again, of cross-disciplinary uh, research and including legal and regulatory factors. Next slide. So in next slide, in terms of the, the specific discussion points, uh, to summarize what I've just said is, uh, a number of investigators talked about not defaulting to laboratory reference uh, ranges based on European ancestral populations uh, to address the lack of data regarding the use of race or ethnicity in clinical algorithms. Next slide. The necessity to oversample recent African ancestral populations. The lack of diversity in researchers, peer reviewers, it has far impacts on fundamentally what is being studied evaluating downstream impacts and health equity should go beyond representation and data to include the downstream health implications and community engagements involves strengthening these bi-directional relationships. Next slide. Next slide. So in terms of the opportunities for NHGRI, I think front and center um, is diversifying the genomic workforce and landscape. Uh, the second bullet point addresses the lack of diverse genomic data, all very fixable issues. The third bullet point uh, and the fourth bullet point are actually quite related, understanding how a lack of diversity in populations and communities uh, impacts health disparities. Um, and the fourth point is actually quite complex. We didn't actually have simple answers for this um, to address the inappropriate use of categories as opposed to more genetic quantitative continuous data uh, when interpreting these laboratory values, clinical markers, and underutilization of genetic markers. Uh, the fifth point is nurturing these longstanding relationships. And finally, the next slide is we want to develop metrics of health equity, uh, such as access to genomic testing um, and applying them across genetic studies. Next slide. Um, so in terms of the recommendations, each one of these breakout groups then came out from with anywhere from two to three questions uh, that the NHGRI staff put together and the audience and participants were asked to highlight vote for one of them. Um, and there was a lot of overlap between some of these priorities, but uh, number one and two was diversify the genomics work, workforce um, and by including um, historically black medical colleges 
Uh, and the second highest uh, priority was to ensure sufficient uh, data uh, and resources uh, for studying this with community engagement. Next slide. And so finally, um, I think uh, one, kind of a concluding thought is that this idea of health equity needs to be incorporated across all branches of genomics research, from the most basic genomics research on the left to more implementation types of genomic learning within uh, um, healthcare systems. Um, and it needs to be studied um, uh, in, to create virtuous cycles of advancing knowledge uh, from bench to bedside. Next slide. So the video and workshop report has already been published and is located at this URL. And uh, the group is working with NHGRI staff. Uh, there is a preliminary workshop report that's I think been posted already, uh, as well as to prepare a manuscript for submission to peer reviewed publications. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, and then acknowledgement. Again, it's been an absolute pleasure working with NRHGRI. My co-chair, San Sandra Lee, uh, the NHGRI communication group uh, managed a very complex workshop and all of the participants. So I'll take any questions now. Actually, can we start by offering Sandra Lee the opportunity to add anything she would like to your presentation? Sandra, are you with us? Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, great. No, I just want to add my thanks and um, applaud the investment in this discussion. It was a really fantastic group and the NHGRI staff that led it um, really did a tremendous job. And I also wanted to thank Judy for her leadership on this. I will say there's just tremendous synergy uh, with the discussion of the concepts earlier today, I, I will say. Um, and the, the kind of broad discussion, um, thinking about where there's points of intervention to move the needle on equity across the research ecosystem was particularly striking, I think, over the two days. Um, and you see it in the recommendations that, that include uh, not just um, issues related to, to classification and population descriptors upstream, but the downstream implications in terms of implementation that Judy, uh, Judy described. So um, I'll, I'll just say, I thought that was a terrific summary. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Sandra. All right, are there other questions for Judy about the workshop? Laura, go ahead, please. Uh, thank you for the presentation. It was really great. And the workshop sounds like it was wonderful. Um, are we also thinking about the urban rural divide that exists because you know there's just such a tremendous disparity in healthcare and you know my gosh we've really changed so many of the things now with uh, the pandemic and zoom and televisits and a variety of things so what are, are how are we going to make sure that there isn't this despair increasing disparities with urban and rural populations it was brought up there were panelists and breakout members who did discuss these issues and a little bit of telehealth was mentioned. Um, I am not, I, I don't remember uh, reading the workshop report. It was definitely mentioned in a couple of the, uh, the breakout groups. Um, I don't know, Sandra, if you, if you had any recollections beyond that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that it was a, a focus of discussion. It probably needs to be in terms of these right. other broader dimensions of diversity. I mean, certainly the digital divide, I think, was brought up. Um, but these issues around access to care um, that perhaps mm -hmm. are, are, are important in terms of thinking about rural versus urban um, are certainly ones that I think we should be focused on. Yeah. And I just want to say there is a movement to decrease telehealth now by many different insurance groups um, as the pandemic is ending. So we, you know, we have to be aware that we may be going into more disparities. I wasn't aware of that. I guess maybe the, the work from the pandemic is wearing off a bit, um, but I thought that was a positive development. I thought it was a positive too, but I know some of the uh, insurance companies, for instance, are starting to creep down. Maybe they didn't like all the visits, 
I don't know. Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. Other questions or thoughts? All right, Judy, thank you for the presentation. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Rudy. All right, Sandra, thank you for joining us. Bye bye. Bye now. Bye bye. Thanks. Well, it's open session. You're welcome to stick around if you like. <laughs>